Hi, uh, welcome to this seminar on distributed file system, namespaces and replication. Uh, my name is Sean Savile and really what I want to try and do in this session is to talk about what distributed file system is, um, why we need it and actually how it works behind the scenes. So before we talk about DFS, I mean it's good to actually talk about well what do we have today with our file servers which is really what we're focused around. So traditionally we have lots of different file servers in our organization and each of those may have multiple shares on them. And so me as the user when I'm trying to access information I don't always know where to go to find that information. I may have multiple map drives, so I've got an X drive, a Y drive, a Z drive, a T drive, an S drive. And I'm trying to find information, I can't find it. Is the information somewhere I don't currently have a map drive to? It's even worse. There's all these servers out there with all these different shares that's organized by physical location. It's not organized by logical, the type of data uh, where it might be used. So to the end user, it's very confusing. It's hard to manage. And also, there might be multiple copies of one of these shares. For example, this, this could be in one location. Well, I could have another location over here with its own file server and a different copy of, let's say, this content, share A. Well, if I jump on a plane and fly over to this location, my map drive is still going to be pointing to this version of the share, and not the one that's physically closest to me. So it's very inefficient. I'm wasting my bandwidth. So it's really not something we want to do. So what does DFS do for us? Well, there's really two parts to DFS. So the first part is it basically creates a logical view of the namespace. And to do that, we have DFS namespace servers. So this is a, a box. This is your DFS namespace server. And it has a namespace. Now, there's two types of namespace available, standalone and domain-based. A standalone DFS namespace is essentially just hosted and stored in the registry of a server. It doesn't require Active Directory integration. Um, I can make it highly available. I can install that on a fellow cluster with 2008 and above. And traditionally, it could support more links to folders, but that's not really the case with 2008 anymore. Um, but it's really just a standalone separate namespace server. And if users wanted to connect to the, the namespace, it would be whack whack server name slash the DFS namespace. So data, for example. The other type is domain integrated. So here it's actually storing the information about the namespace in the Active Directory. And for high availability, I just have multiple DN DFS namespace servers, and they all subscribe to the same information in the Active Directory. So it's highly available without having to use failover clustering. Um, the advantage as well with that is, my namespace would actually be um, basically the fully qualified domain name slash data. So saveltech.com slash data. So I'm abstracting away even the DFS name server. Clients don't need to know that anymore. They just access the domain name slash the data and they have access. They can, they can get to that namespace. So it's a namespace server and then the actual namespace. So let's just say the simplicity, we're doing a domain-based. And like I say, with domain-based, I can have multiple DFS servers all connected to the same AD, all publishing the same namespace data. Within that namespace, I create folders. So maybe I create sales. And then I have folder targets. And that folder target points to actual shares on servers. So it might point to this share here. I have multiple link targets. I can also point to that copy over there. 
I may have another one, legal, that maybe points to that share over there. I can create folders without any links. Uh, maybe I just create something called marketing. And under that, I could create US, Europe, and they have links. So basically, I'm now organizing all of my different file shares, all of my information, based on a logical design. How the data is more easily understood. So now if I'm a user, and I'm trying to find marketing data for the US, well, I just connect to, to the single namespace, I browse down, I see marketing, I'm organizing it by US, and then it points me to actually where that data is. I can have more than one DFS namespace. Um, I can have multiple standalone DNF, DFS namespaces, I can have multiple domain based. Now with Windows Server 2003, uh, I could only have one namespace per DFS server. With Windows Server 2003 SP2 and Windows Server 2008 R2 and 2008, Standard Edition can only have one standalone DFS namespace per server. I can have multiple domain-based DFS namespaces per server. And if I'm running enterprise or data center, then anything 2003 or above can have multiple domain or standalone namespaces. So I can have multiple namespaces. But again, I want to try and minimize the number of namespaces I had to make it easier for the users. But if I did have another namespace, I can actually have a link over here that actually points to another DFS namespace. So, so I can embed them, so I can create these very good hierarchies and structure within my DFS namespace. To consume this, so DFS is not redirecting the data. He's not, the DFS server is not reading the content and then forwarding it to the client. That would be very inefficient. All DFS is really doing is redirecting the user to the right copy of the data. That's all it does. And essentially, it's NT4, Service Pack 6A and above, clients support DFS. They, they can just consume this information. Uh, Windows 98 could uh, with an add-on, and Windows ME can, if anyone's running ME, um, I don't know if anyone is anymore, whoever was. Um, but again, only standalone. I mean, there's a home operating system that don't support domain-based. So, that's great, okay, I can have multiple link targets, so what? So let's take this user again. And let's actually say I'm accessing sales. And I'm currently in this location. DFS will actually say, okay, you're in this location, this AD site, I'm gonna redirect you to this copy of the data because it's closest to you. If I jump, if I jump on a plane, go to this site and access that same namespace, well, this time it's actually going to say, well, you're now in this AD site. There's a copy of the data closer to you. So I'm going to redirect you to this copy of the data now. If I was in a site that didn't have a copy of the data, there's different things that can happen. We can label least cost um, DFS. And essentially what, what that 